I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about fertility preservation, whether you should freeze your eggs or freeze embryos. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people preserve their fertility and build their families for over 15 years. So I talk to people about preserving their fertility all the time. And a really common question is, I know that I want to freeze my fertility, but should I freeze eggs or should I freeze embryos? You know, eggs are just this potential, but I've read online that maybe embryos are better, that we have more experience with them. So Dr. Shaheen, you know, should I freeze eggs or embryos? So I have a whole YouTube series on egg freezing and answers questions like when you should freeze your eggs, how many eggs should you freeze? Um, who should think about doing fertility preservation and egg freezing? So go to those videos to learn a lot more, but a lot of questions came up in the comments. Like you're talking a lot about egg freezing, Dr. Shaheen, but I heard that embryos were better. I heard that I should freeze embryos, even if I don't have a partner, if I do have a partner. And so I want to explain exactly what's going on and help you learn more so you can make the right decision for you. So those comments and questions have turned into this video. So if you have questions about your fertility, there's topics that you want to cover, make sure you comment in this video about what you want to learn about. So it's true. We've been freezing embryos for a lot longer in the field than we've been freezing eggs. And if you just put into a search engine, should I freeze eggs versus embryos? You will find a lot of blog posts and information about embryos are just, we have more experience. Experience, we know a lot more about them and maybe you should freeze embryos instead of eggs. Well, I actually feel that with the technology and where it is today, and if you do your freezing in the right lab, success rates are very similar between eggs and embryos. In my lab, Pacific Northwest Fertility, we have been freezing and thawing eggs since 2009 and we have incredible success rates because of the lab and the lab directors that we have here. And I feel very confident if somebody is ready to freeze their fertility, that they could do either eggs or embryos and not make that decision based on success rates. But there are differences between egg freezing and embryo freezing. And so I do want to talk about that. So you think about the majority of people who are preserving their fertility as you know, single women who are maybe in their mid thirties, just haven't found a partner yet or been focused on other things in life, not ready to conceive. And they're coming to me to freeze their eggs. Well, those people should not go out and find donor sperm in order to create embryos, just in order to preserve their fertility because it's so much better and keeps so many options open if you actually freeze eggs so that whatever sperm you want to use in the future, it's available to you. And that could be donor sperm in the future too. I'm just saying, if you want to keep your options open and you don't have a partner that you know that you want to have kids with, then freeze eggs. Of course, talk to your lab and your doctor about the right thing. But that's what I tell my patients at Pacific Northwest Fertility. Now I am seeing more and more couples wanting to freeze their fertility. So this is a couple and one person has eggs and one person has sperm and they're coming to me for whatever reason, they are not ready to start their family, but they know they want to have kids together eventually someday. And they're asking me, Hey, I've got eggs. I've got sperm. Should I freeze eggs or should I freeze embryos? And so for those couples, it's a unique situation, but it's becoming so much more common that I want to address, Hey, should you freeze eggs or embryos? And in this conversation, there's pros and cons. So you've got the people that want to have a family together, but still, should they freeze eggs or should they freeze embryos? A little reminder of the process because the process for the person with eggs is the same, whether they're doing egg freezing or embryo freezing in that we are we're going through education, we're talking about medication, we um, give that person gonadotropins for about two weeks and we do an egg retrieval. So please go to my other videos learning all about egg retrieval and how to plan for IVF and my videos on shots. I've got lots of information about IVF here, but that process is the same. What we're talking about is once the eggs are outside of the body, do we freeze the eggs or do we fertilize them with sperm? 
and freeze embryos. Again, the process, the shots, the appointments, the egg retrieval, that's all the same for the person with eggs. It's what are we doing with those eggs when they're outside of the body? There's pros and cons to eggs versus embryos. The three pros for egg freezing, number one, lower cost now. So when same kind of preparation, you have to pay for the medications, you're paying for the egg retrieval, but when the eggs are out of the body, you're freezing eggs. Now, when you go to use those eggs, there's going to be an additional cost in the future to thaw the eggs, fertilize them with sperm, create the embryos, maybe test the embryos and do an embryo transfer. But right now with the fertility preservation process, it's less expensive to freeze eggs. The second pro of egg freezing is it's less ethically challenging to discard eggs. Not for everybody. Some people feel the same about eggs and embryos. I'm just saying in general, I have found with my patients that they have an easier time discarding eggs or unfertilized eggs versus discarding embryos. And these are eggs that have been fertilized. The third pro to egg freezing is less arguments or dispute in the future. If this couple that is doing fertility preservation splits up or changes their mind about family building in the future. So let me explain. If you're doing egg freezing, those eggs belong to the person who they came from. If you create and freeze embryos in the future, the per the, there's two people that are involved in that process, the person with the eggs and the person with sperm. And if they split up or they feel differently, one person wants to have kids, the other person doesn't wanna have kids. If they disagree, then it can be much more challenging. I talked to couples about this. I'm like, this is not very romantic. You guys are in love right now. You want to have kids together in the future. I'm basically talking about a prenup here. You're, you know, times change, things can change. You could break up. And so think about that. And you might want to meet with a reproductive lawyer before you create embryos to really solidify intent. Um, in our IVF consent forms in my clinic, it does talk about your intent if you were to break up or one partner were to die if you create embryos together. But IVF consents are medical consents. They show intent, but they are not legal documents. And so it makes a lot of sense to consider a consult with a reproductive lawyer and talking about intent in the future. The cons of egg freezing are you're freezing eggs in the potential, but you don't know a lot about what would happen in the future. So there are these wonderful egg freezing calculators out there that you can put in your age and the number of eggs that you freeze. And they'll tell you the success rate in the future when you go to create embryos and do a transfer with these embryos. But this is just a potential. These egg calculators are fun. Um, the one I like is from Harvard. So you can put in, if you're 30 years old and you freeze 15 eggs, there's an 80% chance of one live birth, about a 50% chance of two, and a 20% chance of three. But if you did this 10 years later, if you froze your eggs at 40 years old and freeze 15 eggs, there's a 40% chance of one live birth, a 10% chance of two, and only a 1% chance of three. I like this egg calculator because it kind of breaks it down into three children. This is just a guess, but you can play around with this egg calculator. You can change the egg number, you can change age, and you can see that as the eggs age, we need more and more eggs frozen to improve the odds of a successful outcome in the future. And so it just um, helps kind of solidify and understand that need. But this is just the calculator. This isn't real life. We have no idea what the sperm is going to be like that you decide to use in the future, you know, success rates can change over time. Eggs are a potential, but you just have less knowledge about what is actually going to happen in the future. What about the pros and cons of embryo freezing? A pro is that you have more knowledge of what you really have frozen. So if you take an egg and a sperm all the way to an embryo stage, especially if you do the genetic screening or pre-implantation genetic testing on the embryo, if you have one frozen embryo, we talk to people at my clinic that in the future, when you go to use it, it's at least a 70% chance of live birth with that single embryo transfer from a genetically screened euploid embryo. And so in general, if somebody wants to have two kids in the future, that seems to be their family goal in the present, 
the best way to optimize your odds is to have four to six euploid embryos frozen. Now that is not perfect. That's just numbers and statistics. I have patients with two embryos and they have two kids. It's just that that's really exciting and just exceptional because not every embryo is going to be a baby. So the more embryos you have frozen, the better chance you'll have success in that family of your dreams in the future. And so again, with embryo freezing, especially if you do genetic screening on them, you just have more solid numbers and kind of really are aware of what you have frozen and waiting for you. Cons of embryo freezing are kind of go back to the pros and cons of egg freezing. So the cons of embryo freezing, number one, it's a higher cost now. So you're paying for the fertilization, the creation of the embryos, and even the genetic screening now, as opposed to it's less expensive to freeze eggs now, but you defer that cost until later. Number two, it can be more ethically challenging for people to discard embryos because these are fertilized eggs. So that's important to discuss with your partner and yourself when you're thinking through things. And number three, there's just a higher chance of dispute between partners as life changes and goals change. If the two people who have created embryos together in order to freeze their fertility change their goals in the future, it can be a lot more tension and a lot tougher to kind of work through and find a compromise. So let's recap. Fertility preservation is an incredible option for preserving fertility for whatever reason. And for people who have the option of freezing eggs or creating embryos, there are pros and cons. Egg freezing is less expensive in the present, but it's a deferred cost. Embryo freezing is more expensive in the present, but um, you kind of know a little bit more about what you actually have frozen. Ethically, some people have a harder time discarding embryos as opposed to eggs. And then just the fun prenup point that if you create embryos, you can't unfertilize them. They are embryos. And so if goals change between the couple that froze those embryos together, that can be a point of dispute. Every situation is unique. I'm seeing more and more couples ask me about these options and I'm really enjoying these consults. So I wanted to share this particular situation with you and let you know how I counsel my patients. So think about options and be sure to talk to your doctor about pros and cons and what your personal situation is. I hope you learned something from this video. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions, topics you wanna cover, subscribe to this channel, and stick around for more learning.